go ahead and oh. do your thing. Yeah. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I would officially like to announce. <laughs> that's always fun. Officially Sorry. like to announce our new head coach, Jimmy. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're really excited to have him on board permanently now. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. Happy to be here. Happy to answer questions that you all have. I think um, I've talked a lot already the last few days, so it's more up to you guys if you have any questions. I think I'm very excited to be here. I express the gratitude towards the club, towards Kelly, uh, towards everyone that I've talked to in the last few weeks. Um, I think going forward, moving forward, we had the discussions that we really wanted to have, just looking at what we want to be like the next upcoming seasons, and I think, um, I think it's going to be very excited, to be honest. So we're very open on answering any questions. Yep. On that note, we'll go ahead and get started. Amy. <coughs> then you. from there, we'll just pass the mic around. Congratulations. Um, just wondering if you could talk us through sort of how you found out you were going to be taking over, what it's like also to go from being an assistant, um, especially one who came into the game to the season later, and then to know you're going to have to take over, like what kind of emotional and physical and tactical things did you face right in that moment? Um, I think first of all, when I got the news, I was quite surprised, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I think it offers also a lot of mental rest, just being able to look forward, just being able to not look until the end of 2024, but just being able to look on the longer term, because I think that's something as a club, as an organization, everyone needs the longer term vision, looking at what do we, how do we want to be, um, how do we want to look like in the upcoming years. And I think that was, for me, was the most important part of being appointed or receiving the message that how or the, the organization wanted me to become the head coach that, that offers like the opportunity for us to just look forward and start making decision based upon what we know or how we want to look like in the upcoming season. Obviously, when you look at a group and you have six months, um, but when you look at a group and you know you have two and two and two years and six months, three years maybe, that offers a lot of rest and that also uh, offers another approach towards players. You can give them more time, you can give them more rest and really work on the longer term with players as well. And I think that's very important. Obviously, results, performances are very important, but once you get that message, you can also just spread and make decisions based upon um, more of a sustainable way of looking at the group, looking at the players. And I think that was, to me, was very important as well at that moment. Can you go back to when you took over as interim though, when yeah. uh, Amy was released? What was that like? Um, I think that was, I tend to say, looking at the group, uh, seeing the group the day after was, is the same way as I look at the group right now. Um, it was a group that was very hungry. Um, nobody really spoke about decisions that were made. Everyone was looking forward. And I think that was also a very positive signal from the group. Like they were, they were present on training. Uh, we offered them to have like a, a medium, small session, very light. And everyone was like, hey, we rather just get started. We want to go. Uh, we're ready. It was a Monday. They said, like, we just want to go. Uh, we're ready to just train and, and start looking forward and building on what we want to build on as a group. And I think that was very important to me as well to receive that message. And I think when you take over as an interim head coach, it's been my second time already. It was the same in my previous club as well. You're very depending on how much the group is willing to give you, uh, how much credit they want to give you, or how much time they want to give you to adapt things. And I think the group came in on Monday and was really like, hey, whatever you want us to do this weekend, we'll do it. Um, we are 100% ready to just do what we have to do because we want to move forward. We want to become a more competitive team. We want to become better from an individual point of view, but also from a group point of view. And I think that's still the most important part of being appointed as, as an interim head coach, just the buy-in of the team, looking at different types of players that you have in a team. Obviously, you'll have players that right away want to jump with you. You'll have a few that you have to convince. You'll have a few that to whom you have to prove yourself. Um, and I think the first few days after the appointment, together with the staff, we just presented a very good plan. Like, hey, this is how the next eight weeks will look like for you. Um, from an individual point of view, from a group point of view, when it comes to conditioning, when it comes to playing, when it comes to video, everything, like a full established plan. So also a lot of credit to the staff uh, for spending that whole Sunday with me, just making sure that we had everything covered for the players. Uh, but they really felt like, OK, this is a player-oriented environment. The player is put in, like centrally in what we want to do. 
And from that moment on, I have to be fully honest, I heard it uh, Madison Pogar saying as well uh, in our last interview after the game that we played this week and like nobody saw us working those six weeks um, when everyone had like the Summer Cup or a bit time off, we were working very hard and that's obviously what they did. They worked very hard, but they also allowed the staff to just do what we think is the right thing to do. Um, and. I put the emphasis on what we think. Obviously, everyone has a certain way of working. We introduced our way of working, and we have to be honest with the group. Like, they went all in straight away, and they're still doing it on a daily basis. Um, and I think that's just very important. Was there a moment as a as a club that you knew Jimmy was going to be your long term solution here? Um, I think he had a immediate impact with the group, um, uh, and we saw the conversations and the relationships that he was building with the players, um, which was extremely positive. Um, so from the off, it was uh, like a good start. Um, but just then, obviously, this league is completely different to any in the world. Um, and it's and it was new to Jimmy. So it was a uh, it was myself just wanting to give him time in the league and give the club time in the league to see how we would do and how competitive can we be. And yeah, I think um, I think it was just being more positive every week. We stepped out on the field, every every training session, every conversation I was having with the gym, with Jimmy, with the players, um, and I think every week just became more and more undoubtable that he was going to be the head coach. And, and maybe it's the same answer that, that Jimmy gave, but was there a or I guess is there a reason to do this now as opposed to maybe waiting to the off season to, to remove the interim tag? Yeah, I think the reason for it now is that we can start planning. Um, and not just planning for next season, planning long term. Um, obviously, I have my long term plans for the club, but it's important that the head coach is involved in that. And um, I want Jimmy to be involved in that. And um, the sooner we could get this out, it's easier for him to have conversations with players that we might want to bring in or we're talking to players that are in the current squad um, that he can actually go. This is what we're planning f going forward. And um, I think we've got a a good plan in terms of where we want to go and wh what we want to achieve. And um, I'm just glad that we've got him secured down and we can now start looking to the future. I want to ask kind of a similar thing to Jimmy is that, but you touched on it a, a little right there. When the coaching changeover and everything happened, you were pretty clear. Um, you guys in leadership were pretty clear that you were building not just for this year, but for the future, getting a jump start on 2025 and all that. Do you feel like you saw something out of kind of Jimmy and, and these and, and his team that gives you that jump start, I guess, not just on 2025, but for beyond? Like, did you kind of see p maybe pockets of what they could be moving forward? I guess? Yeah, definitely. I, I don't um, I don't think we see I don't think we saw at the start of the season or the first half of the season um, the players at their best and the quality that we actually had in this squad. I think obviously there was questions in terms of some of the players that we brought in and the direction of the club and um, being able to compete in this league. There was question marks from outside looking in. And um, I think the one thing that Jimmy's done is has been able to allow those players to really um, show themselves and show that they can compete in this league and show that we as a team that we can compete in this league. and. Um, I think that was that was the part that actually no we we've got a squad that are very very capable of competing in this league and I don't think they showed that um, I wasn't able to show that at the start of the season I think credit to Jimmy he's been able to bring that out of the players and I think that's given us a really really strong platform now to push forward and look to the future. Jimmy, kind of similar question there. You touched on this actually after the game over the weekend about building for the future. But when you came in as an interim, was it? tough to kind of think about building for the future because your job at the time I guess was as much up in the air as anybody else as an interim head coach and all of that like you obviously didn't know if you would be around after the season so how, how quickly I guess did you kind of move towards not just building for this year but for next year and potentially I think after the appointment, we had a, a dinner with both ownership, with also the leaders of this club. Um, and I think we talked a lot about 
the longer term, just how do we want this team to look like? And I think as a as an interim head coach, I didn't feel the urge to prove myself, but to just start working towards that future plan. And I think in the end, um, you can try to prove yourself or you can try to already start building towards whatever you want this club to look like. And I think um, just doing that, also looking at players in a different way. Like I said, we started doing a lot of individual uh, training sessions with players. Again, looking forward, we detected the high potential players within the group, we started working on an individual base with them and I think that it's just something that we wanted to do, uh, we had to do as well for our environment to become better but in the end, like I said, just understanding what this club would like to look like in 2027, 2028 just offers whoever is taking this role the opportunity to already start working towards that bit because in the end, you don't want any player to just lose a season. You want everyone to be competitive, everyone to grow. And I think that's just my job or whether I was interim head coach or I'm a head coach, that's just our job as coaches just to start working towards what we want to look like. And in the end, it turned out very well. Players picking up their roles, players picking up individual responsibility and becoming better every day. And I think that was the biggest part of the conversation we had right after the appointment as an interim head coach. And I think that also offers just rest to know what the club wants to do, how they want to do it, but also where they want to be 2025, 2026, just offers like a full image. And that's also what we brought back to the staff, like, hey, like the club's DNA, club's philosophy is to look like this kind of team. So let's start working. It doesn't matter if we're six months into the season, eight months, like let's start working now. Let's not spend four or five months on being who we don't want to be next season. Let's just start building a few blocks and we'll see where we end up. I think that's still the most important part of what we're doing today and again um, a lot of the interviews that the players gave the last few weeks are really referring to hey we're working towards the future we're working on what we want to look like how I as an individual player would like to look like and if you find that mix between how do we as a club <coughs> want to look like in 2026 2027 and how does a player want to look like and if you find the right match then you find that fire in everyone's eyes to just show up on training and compete and I think that's still one of the most important things that we're doing. Um, I think we just came out of a training session where you see a team in an in international break just competing. Um, I mean, they were really going, they were, they still want to improve. And like I said, we had three days off uh, previous to today, we had three days off. And it was not a day that the full squad wasn't in. Just doing individual stuff, doing strength, doing um, health, medical, going on the pitch with me. I did four to five indi individual sessions uh, yesterday. I think that's also just a big part of the future, like players wanting to invest in themselves and wanting to use our environment to become a better, um, the best possible version of themselves. And I think that's something we still have to invest in. When you were um, when you were asked to take over as interim coach, um, what was the like the mental state of the players? What because losing that much and having that lack of success on the field for a professional athlete has to be demoralizing. And how did you address that? Um, I think the most important part is again is is and that's very typical to um, women's soccer in general. Is like you present them a plan and you explain them why. Um, I think that's still the the most important part. Like we presented them something. Uh, obviously, when they came in, everyone was surprised. We had a there was a result against Portland. We had a few things going on, and players were like, "Okay, this is something new. This is happening. How do we react on it?" But I think straight away it was a presentation, but from Kelly, from myself, like, "Hey, this is who we want to be, and here is the why." Um, and once we started explaining the why, you saw just players in the room going like, "Okay, this is something I can buy into." This is something I can work with, and again, I think that's just the most important part. Like, it's not, it's not how hard the hit is, but it's just like, what does the environment gonna look like for me in the upcoming weeks? And I think the good thing um, about the staff, about the club, is that straight away, I think less than 12 hours after everything happened, we were able to just show them like, hey, this is where we're going towards with you guys. This is our plan, and this is our direction, and this is how we're gonna do it as well. I think just being able to show that to the players also gave them the opportunity to just turn the switch, keep on going. And obviously, I think it was also looking at the time. You had one week where you had a game, then we had the, the, the week off. Every player had a week off. I think that offered also just mental rest, uh, mental physical rest. And after that week, just the first first training day was again like presentation. We it was not a week off for the staff, so everyone was in just working a whole week, just trying to put together a plan like, okay, f again, from June until the end of September, this is what we're going to do. We presented to every player. We also presented how we're going to work 
on IDP stuff, how we're going to do individual work, how we're going to do video, how every individual staff member will have an impact on their career. And again, from the first day on, they were just like, okay, let's, let's do it. I think that was just a very important moment for the group as well to make that switch. Uh, I think it's within my nature um, to communicate a lot with players on an individual base. I think that was the first thing I did in the, in the three days after my appointment. I called every player in. And from what I saw so far, and obviously I only saw a week or two weeks of training, I told them, like, hey, this is what I think your role will be in the upcoming weeks. Are you willing to take up this role? Like, this is a responsibility that I give to you. Yeah, this is what I expect from you. You can express your expectations with me. I'll write everything down and we'll find a match. Um, and that will be our working relationship. And I think, again, that's just something I do on a, on a daily basis, just talking a lot with players. And um, I very often also get asked questions about my age. Um, like, a few players are older than you, more experienced than you. And that's true. That's perfectly OK. But as long as you have a good relationship with them and you understand where they want to go and they understand where I want to go, and we both, on both sides, we get to prove how we're going to do it, then I think you just establish a very good relationship. And I think that's just very important, like players like Claudia Zanosa, but also Chloe like Asla, just involving them in the things that I would like to do. I will never ask for approval. Um, I will just ask them, like, hey, do you feel good doing this? Do you feel OK? How do you feel? Because in the end, they're going on the pitch, and they have to execute whatever we think is the best thing to do. And if they don't feel comfortable, we might just adapt slightly or have a look at how we can do these things differently for every player to feel comfortable and competitive. I think that's just something we'll have to keep on doing and just have a good relationship, talking, communicating, and then obviously when a player doesn't accept a role, then there is a decision that we have to make um, because we want everyone to feel one really well in our environment, competitive, and also give the feeling that they're growing as an individual. And if one of those three elements doesn't work anymore, then there is then there is just something going on in our relationship and then we have to find solutions. So I think that's just uh, an important part of how we work as coaches, as an organization. Jimmy, um, <clears throat> you've referenced uh, the potential of this team in the future, the plan that you have for them. As a head coach, what do you like about a challenge, the challenge specifically of taking a, basically a brand new team and turning them into an eventual championship contender? That's everything you like as a coach. I think um, not only as a coach, but also as a, as a player. Like um, I think back in Belgium as well, but here as well, um, I think our main phrase as a staff is that we want to create the most powerful and challenging environment for every player and staff member. Um, and even as staff members, like on a daily basis, we should be improving. Um, if we have medical staff, if we have performance staff, like on a daily basis, they should be improving themselves in order again to create a, a more powerful environment for the players. So I think the challenge as a coach is, and I think definitely looking at the league as well, is it's very adaptive, it's very evolving uh, on a daily basis. There are some European coaches coming into the league trying to play in a different way that this league has been playing the last few years. So again, it's adapting, it's making sure you're up to date with everything that could potentially happen. Um, and then again, it's introducing how you want to do um, how you want to play and how you would like to translate obviously the the Royals way of playing and how this club want to look like and I think we had a we had some conversations um, I had a very interesting conversation with Jason as well looking at what is the philosophy do we want to develop players do we want to have just buy players what do we want to look like and if you find that good mix of okay this is what we want to be this is how we want to look like and then you can translate that to the staff and the players that's how you create challenges for yourself and for players and I think that remains to me, that remains the basic energy that you have to give to a group, challenge them on a daily basis. Um, if it's in a warm-up, if it's in a, a 5v5, the most, I would dare to call them the most stupid things on a pitch, we need to challenge them. Because once you find that fire in someone's eyes, that's what keeps them going. Um, and I think that's just very important. And no matter what situation you're in, you can be, you can just have lost three games, as long as you have that fire in everyone's eyes, you feel like you're still moving forward, and that's what you need to find as a coach. Kelly, what values had you identified, results aside, which are difficult to argue with, what values had you identified as crucial for the head coaching position, and how did you see those in Jimmy? Yeah, of course. I think the, the biggest one is um, just relationship with the players on an individual aspect, um, knowing that they were yes, a part of this process, but how are they a part of this process in terms of where we want to go? Um, but also for them to understand where they fit in, in, this, in this structure and in this team. And um, 
and that relationship with the head coach is is so important um, because they have clarity on their role, they have clarity on the structure that we're going to play. Um, so that was the key piece for me, um, really making, finding someone that was really player centered um, and then just making sure that that was somebody that was really going to invest in these players and it wasn't just about them, it wasn't just about the club, it was actually about every day what we do with these players um, from an individual aspect, like I said, Jimmy's mentioned a, mem a number of times like the individual development programs that he's producing for players. It's not just on pitch, it's film analysis, it's gym, it's psychological uh, support, it's nutrition support. So from a whole IDP point of view, like he's really honing in on the players and I think that's what's really given him the belief to get the results on the pitch. But yeah, it was finding someone that was really player centered and that was gonna bring the best out of these players. Thank you. And as I said, impossible to argue with results both in Belgium and here so far. But do you have an answer for a small segment of the fan base who is disappointed that they don't have a female head coach leading the team? Yeah, of course. I understand. Um, I think what we have done is the appointment of Jimmy. I think he's shown that he's empowered our our female players um, to produce what they're producing on the pitch. Um, we have it's not, I know it's not just a head coach role, but we have over 70% of the Royals dedicated staff that are female and um, we have more appointments coming up. It's not, Jimmy's not the only person. Um, so we have more appointments that will be coming in place because yes, he's done a, a fantastic job, but we need to make sure that we're supporting him to keep supporting the players. So um, I think it's a case of one, watch this space. And I think we're going in the right direction to make sure that we keep empowering women and that we keep empowering women in the right way that they're they des they're in deserve of that of that role w or a, um, an opportunity thank you very much no problem and jimmy can i ask just now that you know that you're the <coughs> now that you know that you're the man what excites you the most about this project moving forward as we move into next year um just feeling the support to be honest i think on a weekly base um we have certain calls uh, with ownership with the people in this room as well I think what amazes me and um, I think what amazes me the most is just receiving on a weekly base the question like how are you doing like not how is the team doing how is the environment like how are you feeling and I think not forgetting about the human part um, of coaches of an environment and investing in the people that we have in our environment as well is also just a feeling that as a coach as an environment you want to have as well like people do care about you people do care about the environment I think that's very exciting and then the, the second question is okay what can we do to make our environment better and I think receiving that question almost on a weekly basis, um, like it's it's the opening of, of our calls like I think that's just very important to us as well to feel like okay we want to move forward uh, we want to become that really competitive environment um, and next to that I think what we've been doing the last few weeks as well, um, going out to the community, going out to the people, uh, making sure that everyone one knows what we're about, um, what we're doing, but also just showing that we can give something back to the community is something that should be exciting us as well. Because in the end, um, I think that's the magic about women's soccer is um, players staying out more than an hour after the game, still talking to players, uh, to people, to families, to little girls that might end up playing the game. I think that's something that we all want to see more um, and I think that's just something that we're empowering as well from our perspective and making time for everyone just to feel connected with us. I think that's a very exciting part. Um, besides that, obviously, there is a, a huge sportive challenge ahead and I think that's just something that we're really keen on starting. Um, I do know it's the last game next week, but um, I, we were just talking about it in the car, like we're really looking forward in starting in January and just making like starting in history, just making sure that we do something that people will mind themselves of in, in the next upcoming seasons. And I think that's just something that we want to do uh, from a club perspective. And again, feeling that support and also feeling like, OK, we're we're sometimes throwing big words on the table, but we're also putting in actions that support those words. I think that's just very important to understand as a coach, like, OK, we do want to get there, but we also will receive everything that we need in order to go towards that point. And it's not only about about players, it's about a full environment, looking at the facilities that uh, we opened in July. I mean, that's a perfect example of how a club wants to invest in women's soccer, giving all the possibilities to a player to develop herself and to challenge herself on a daily basis. I think that was a huge 
just a huge um, statement towards the outside. We're like, hey, this is what the roles are about. This is what we're going to be about in the upcoming season. And I think that's just something I really wanted to be part of. Um, and again, now it's all about being competitive and, and challenging the players to become a better, better player on a daily basis. Coach, I'm going to try my hand at Dutch. Fefe Lissy tiered. Go again. Fefe Lissy tiered. Okay, yeah, that's How not bad. It's not I? bad. It's not bad. Did you at least get what I was trying to say? I would say it's as good as my Spanish. So <laughs> we get to say how good that is. We get good. to say how good that is. For those who don't know, I was trying to say congratulations. Um, you mentioned the dinner. You mentioned the discussions. How many days ago was the job awarded? I <sighs> can't. <laughs> Nobody uh, knows it's a since then. <laughs> yeah, a lot happened. Like, definitely a lot happened. Um, no. okay. Yeah, I think about a month ago we just started looking at uh, everything. But I think before you go into, there is definitely a part of where you go negotiating and everything. But I think we were also just very down to earth in terms of okay, let's just make sure that on both sides of this table that we're looking at the same. And what I mean by that is um, how I look at the game and how I want players to feel. I wanted to feel that the club wants the same. And again, um, I think after a few days, after a week, we we looked at each other and we were like, hey, we both want this team to be successful, but also every every possible person in our environment to be very successful, whether it's a staff member, whether it's a player, whether it's uh, someone that is working on the administration side of the, of the roles. Like, we want everyone to be successful. And I think just knowing that from each other and, and looking forward and also, again, receiving those opportunities to create that sort of environment, I think after a week we really decided, OK, let's, let's, let's keep on talking. Let's make sure that we end up in a good situation towards each other. How quickly did you call family back home? And what's been their reaction to your success in the States? Well, it would be the only time where I say that the di time difference of eight hours was in my advantage. Um, <laughs> so I think when it's 10 PM in the evening here, it's early morning, 6, 6 AM uh, back in Belgium. So I think we, we had a discussion in the same evening. I just gave my father a call saying like, well, I might stay just a bit longer. Um, so now obviously everyone at home is very happy for me just to stay here. It's, uh, it's also a tough decision as a parent to make, um, like knowing I was going on an adventure and you start an adventure as saying like, well, I'll be back in, in one year and a half. And you end up saying, well, that might be just a bit longer. I don't know. And I think it even turned into, well, I really like it here. So I might just be even longer than what everyone's thinking. Uh, I would like to stay there. So again, I think that's just something um, looking back at my environment, looking back at, at my parents as well, I think what they did very well is challenge me also on a daily basis. I think I'm a, I'm a very good representation on the way that I was raised as a person. Um, nothing was very easy. Everyone, everything was a challenge. And I think that was something my parents did very well, just making sure I, I had everything I needed, but also making sure I realized that I'm not going to get everything in life just, just like that, and I'll have to work for it. And I think getting that balance from home also offers me just a clear view and a very down to earth mentality when it comes to steps that we're making that I'm making as an individual but also something I'd like to translate towards a group like nothing's for granted everything needs to be earned and that's on a daily basis I think that's just very important as well sorry Sean we got time for one more so I'm gonna go ahead and let Jackie on the zoom ask your question before we wrap things up here thank you hi Jimmy congratulations um just had a question in terms of just reflecting about for you just some of the biggest lessons that you've learned from this past few months. Um, is there anything in particular that stands out in terms of just, yeah, lessons that you've learned and how you want to continue to implement those into just the rest of the season? Um, I think one of the most important lessons that I had the last few weeks and months is not necessarily a lesson, but a good heads up. Um, and what I mean by that is that the communication part and, and being able to communicate in an authentic way with players is, in the end, is very important. Um, I've been talking a lot about it the last few days. Is um, something I tend to say, and I'm confident saying, is that what people saw the last three months of, of me as a person is how they will see me the upcoming years as well. Um, I tend to say that that was my approach the last few months, just being myself, just making sure that everyone got a, a good look on, on who I am and what I want to be um, in order just not to deceive in the upcoming weeks and months and having a lot of conversations with the players the last few days and months um, also just show that that is something that they appreciate it. It's not about me being a certain person. It's more about just knowing where they're at, just knowing what um, I expect them to do, the expectation part again. And I think um, I've been 
a bit emotional two days ago when I had like the whole interview photo shoot element and I was walking through our um, performance center where we had a few players working out and they all approached me they were all very happy and they were all very authentic and very open as well um, and I think that's just a very important part to me as well like the players embracing the moment and being happy with my appointment that, that also shows that the last few weeks and months we've done something something in a good way uh, because in the end what we're doing is appreciated by them so I think that to me was a sort of a confirmation I maybe didn't need it in a way but I did receive it in a very, very positive way. And I think that's just something that I learned. Again, it's like, just be, a, be yourself out there because in the end, um, the more you try to be someone else, the more you will not succeed. Um, and in the end, an environment or a player group will have to work with you as a person in the way that you are. And I think that's the easiest thing as a coach, just going out there and, and being yourself on a daily basis. All right, thanks everyone. That's all the time we have. Um, but thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Kelly, for you guys' time today. <coughs>